Hello, I'm Raymond Rackley, Professor of Surgery at the Cleveland Clinic Glickman Urological and Kidney Institute. Women have a 30 to 40 percent lifetime risk for developing pelvic organ prolapse, for which one out of every 10 cases will require surgery to reconstruct the proper support that maintains pelvic organ function of the bladder, uterus, and bowels. For many years, uterine prolapse has traditionally been an indication for hysterectomy, apart from the presence or absence of any uter uterine disease, and remarkably independent of the patient's wishes. While hysterectomy was considered standard practice for correction of uterine prolapse, recent changes have led to its preservation as we have come to the realization that the prolapse of the uterus is a consequence and not the cause of other pelvic organ prolapse. Contemporary lifestyles, beliefs, and perspectives of women with regards to sexual function and pregnancy have undergone profound changes, and many women who undergo surgery for pelvic organ prolapse want to preserve the uterus. While uterine preservation during prolapse surgery is not new, few studies on uterus preservations have been reported, and there are no clear indications for uterus preservation or removal in abdominal or vaginal surgery for pelvic organ prolapse. With the expanding use of laparoscopic techniques in female urology, there has been a surge in interest for incorporating minimally invasive approaches to pelvic organ prolapse repair and uterine preservation procedures. These approaches have the potential to combine the success, versatility, and durability of traditional open abdominal repairs with the minimal invasiveness and recovery afforded by vaginal approaches. The current experience with minimally invasive technology is obviating the complex traditional as well as newer, larger, mesh-dependent vaginal approaches with a recent return to abdominal approaches of laparoscopy. Besides the obvious benefits in recovery time and incision size, one of the benefits of laparoscopy is pelvic surgery and the ability to visualize internal anatomy while working on an external structure. This principle was utilized in creating the techniques for percutaneous vaginal tape placement for prolapse in uterine laparoscopic lifting or pull procedure. The laparoscopic assisted percutaneous vaginal tape procedures are innovations developed at the Cleveland Clinic for women with pelvic organ prolapse. Women have a 30 to 40 percent lifetime risk for developing prolapse for which one out of ten will require reconstructive surgery. We have developed a minimally invasive laparoscopic approach to repair pelvic organ prolapse that avoids having to perform a hysterectomy when uterine prolapse is also present. Utilizing a laparoscopic port configuration for one primary surgeon and one surgical assistant, access and exposure of the sacral promontory is facilitated by temporary retraction of the bowel contents from the pelvis. Utilizing laparoscopic equipment, the peritoneum overlying the inferior portion of the sacral promontory is excised to a distant that meets the reduction of the vaginal apex. In preparation for bilateral percutaneous placement of the vaginal tapes, small skin incisions are made at the lateral aspect of the introitus at the level of the perineal body. To visualize the lateral walls of the vagina in preparation for passing trocars, reduction of the prolapse is achieved with the combinational use of an endoanal sizer and a bivalve vaginal speculum. Two strips of polypropylene mesh are prepared that measure 1.1 by 30 centimeters. A suture that is attached to one end of the vaginal tape is placed through the eyelid of the trocar to allow placement of the tape beneath the lateral walls of the vagina. The distal end of the vaginal tape remains at the perineal body and the proximal end will extend to the sacral promontory. Bilateral placements of the vaginal tapes are fixed to the apical vaginal wall and then joined together in order to fix the tapes to the anterior spinous ligament inferior to the sacral promontory. All graft material is extraperineolized by reapproximization of the perineal incision. The excess vaginal tapes at the distal ends are excised at the skin level without the need for further fixation. This novel repair provides uterosacral ligament replacement for sacrocopal perineopexy with uterine preservation. 
This procedure works equally well for women who develop significant pelvic organ prolapse after hysterectomies who are interested in a minimally invasive repair using a minimum of graft material.